Hey everyone, my name is David Geis, and today I'll be talking to you about Pixie.js. Uh, with a little bit of a focus on creating a game, which I did for my stackathon, but I'll go over like the general basics as well. So starting off, I'll do the obvious and talk about what isn't Pixie. And it is not a game engine. I want to make that very clear. So by default, we don't have the typical framework a game engine gives us. So there's no built-in keyboard input, collision detection, sound, animation, particles. The list goes on and on. But what is Pixie then? What can we do with it if we can't do all those things I just mentioned? It is essentially a wrapper for WebGL, which is a very newish technology. They are like really optimizing it now. Uh, it's super, super fast. Uh, since it works directly on the GPU, uh, which cuts down a lot of processing time, like rather than talking to the processor and coming back, it is a multimedia engine. Multimedia is a very broad category, but Pixie generally does interactive multimedia, like a, a car picker on like a, a site, like you can customize like what parts you want on the car. That would be a very good example. If you don't need interactive, you could probably just make a video and play it on the site. But it is interactive, as I just said. So what does Pixie give us? Sprites. Sprites allow us to essentially create a texture that we can uh, display to the screen. And it has basic transforms such as rotation, uh, translation, and like you can tint it. You can change the uh, transparency of it. The beautiful thing about Pixie is the ease of loading in assets to it. You can load in pictures. You can load in sprite sheets. You can load in JSON objects, which um, are called texture atlases, which I'll show you briefly when I go over examples. Very flexible data structures it gives you. Everything's a container in Pixie, essentially. What is a container? It's essentially a container. <laughs> you can put anything into it, and it can also extend anything. You can add tons of children to it, even if it's a sprite. A sprite is also a container. So all that is very, very handy for, say, changing levels for a game or changing scenes very, very quickly, like on the fly. You can move entire containers uh, all together. So instead of like moving each individual object, you can move the whole container itself to uh, reduce a lot of time and programming. Cross-device compatibility. It, since it's WebGL, it can pretty much work on anything that supports it, um, which I'll show you um, what's supported and what's not as of currently in a little bit. JavaScript. It's pretty much written in JavaScript, so you can use anything that we have learned so far inside Pixie. And you can use Node and Express to create your server for Pixie as well. And like any data structures that we're used to, we can use as well. Different libraries we can use. There's one called Bump, which is a collision detection type uh, library, which I used in my stackathon as well. All of these actually listed I used in my stackathon. Um, Smoothie, which is a like an animation helper. And the cool thing about this library in particular is that you can decouple animation and logic. So your animations can be running at 60 frames a second, but all the logic behind the scenes can be running at like 15, say. So if you don't really need to do that intensive of calculations, you can save a lot of processing, but still keep the smooth frame rate throughout. Keyboard input. Um, I'll show you why it's very hard to do keyboard input effectively later in an example. Um, but this is very nice because it gives you um, hotkeys that you can hook into to easily detect if a key is down, if it's released, if it's still being held down, and etc. Pixie sound is nice. Um, you can get, have independent volume control with every sound that you uh, put into it. And you can even use Node's file system module to import sounds, which I think is really cool. 
And you can also have some basic filters like reverb, distortion. Uh, there's a number of different libraries to work with a program called Tiled, which is specifically for like 2D, either isometric or orthogonal uh, maps. And this allows you to kind of talk to the program and build the levels based on the tiles that you put into Tiled. There's many different ones. They're not all great, but they definitely work. And finally, Particles, which is probably like the coolest library out of them all, just because of like you can have like 10,000 particles on screen and like everything still runs at a buttery 60 frames per second. But the pitfalls to a lot of these libraries is that they're not always necessarily updated. These are user-made libraries. They're not um, supported by anyone. Some are good. OK, yeah, five days ago. Oh, that's last year. That's not so great, especially since Pixie is constantly updating. And like uh, the tutorial I used for Pixie was version 4.0, and the latest one is 4.5. But yeah, sound was good. Tile, not so much. That's a year and a half. It's a bit too long. Particles was pretty good, though. So now I'm going to show you a few quick examples. One, you can draw direct WebGL objects, uh, basics on sprite containers, input and collision, and a small game that you can make uh, in Pixie. So let's go over to our web browser here. Here's some basic WebGL objects you can draw, including text, which draws directly to the GPU. So it's very, very fast. Uh, you didn't see any sort of like loading or like popping in of, of this because it's just instant. You can do outlines of boxes, rounded rectangles, ellipses, circles, you name it. This is uh, sprite containers. All of these are in one container. So you can move it, you can scale it, you can do whatever you want. If I go into the code here, And I change this position to say 121 and 120. Reload the page. They all move together, and I chose and I changed one line of code. This is basically a keyboard input and collision. Collision detection is very very hard to do well and efficiently, and this is just um code I got from a tutorial um, to show you that not always is collision detection easy to do. Mm -hmm. You know, little, you know, I, I think that's on the box, but I uh, could be wrong. <laughs> uh, then finally, this is a little game you can do where you can move around with the arrow keys, you avoid the slimes. If you hit the slime, then your health bar goes down get the treasure chest, and you try to leave. Yay. Uh, some kind of uh, cool examples you can do in Pixie. Like there's this, this I just, that was kind of funny because of uh, this guy here. It doesn't look too good. Um, but this example I thought was really cool here. This is all done in Pixie, like real time, like on, using your browser, and you can see there's like no slowdown, and it's doing a lot here. And going back to what I was going to talk about earlier, WebGL 1, which is the old, much older version, is pretty much supported everywhere, which is very nice. WebGL 2, which is the latest one, not so much. It's only 50% out there for desktops, and like really no smartphones, tablets, and like zero consult type stuff. So it's definitely getting there. It's going to take a while for it to really like uh, gain traction, but it is a very nice uh, replacement for Flash, which is notorious for being like a memory hog, not running well. And I think this solves it a lot. And these are just some resources. Uh, this is a very great tutorial on Pixie. It does use use version 4.0, but it gives you the basics down, and a lot of it still works in version 4.5, which is the latest one. 
This site is what I was just showing you. It shows you basic examples of everything you can do. That's how you can actually get Pixie. And this one package I didn't uh, look into too much, but apparently you can do Pixie and React, which I thought was pretty cool, which you might want to check out. Um, overall, Pixie is a very, very powerful tool if you want to do interactive multimedia, even games, although I don't necessarily recommend it because it's a lot based on user libraries, which may not be updated. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it.